All right, guys. Um, so we are about five minutes in, so I'm going to kick things off. Um, so thank you for taking our opening poll. It's nice to just get a little glimpse into seeing, you know, how comfortable everybody is using some of these low code, no code automation solutions. Looks like most of us are totally new at it, which is great. So this is a great introduction, hopefully give you guys some ideas. Um, and for those of you who are power users, hopefully this will help you take it to the next level. And those of you who are dabbling or fairly comfortable, help you level up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to switch to my next tab. I'm real bad at screen sharing for somebody who does this all the time. Okay, friends, can we see my PowerPoint? Yes. We good? Yes. Okay. All good. Thank you very much. Okay. Welcome to the San Francisco Marketo Engage user group. My name is Amy Goldfine. Normally Lauren Robeck would be here with me, but she is feeling under the weather. So I am powering through for both of us. Just some quick house rules. Um, we're all friends here, and but in order to make this a safe space and make it user focused for all of us and make it a place that we can learn, network and problem solve, please make sure no self-promotion or pitching of any kind is permitted. Um, don't contact people outside of user groups without their consent. Um, and if somebody shares their use case, um, please do not share it without their consent. Um, and if any of you have any issues with anybody doing any of these, please contact me and I will handle it expediently. Um, you know, everybody's been really great. I haven't actually had too many, too much of these problems, but I always want to level set and make sure that we're all comfortable here. A couple opportunities upcoming. Summit! So registration is open for Adobe Summit. It is virtual again this year. It is two days. There's some really cool sessions. Um, so you can register at summit.adobe.com and you can go build your agenda there. So uh, go ahead and do that. Eventually I may have a promotion code to get you absolutely nothing to tell you that um, your local mug registered you, but um, just, you know, go ahead and register for that and uh, see some of this cool stuff that Adobe Summit is offering. Um, you know, since everything is virtual these days, there are lots of mugs all across the world from Auckland to Charlotte to Tokyo to New York. Um, so whether you wanna stay in your own language or try to venture out into Japanese, um, you can go to that same place you registered here, mugs.marketo.com and uh, register for another mug in another topic. And thank you all who are um, joining us from across the country and across the world. Uh, this mug, it's really nice to see all of you here. Um, those of you in the Bay Area, um, please feel free to um, join us in our Slack. If you have not already, um, you can just um, send a DM to me um, within this Zoom and I can add you on there. Um, additionally, I don't have a slide for this, but we're always looking for speakers for SF Mug. So if you are interested in speaking, um, please get in touch with me. You can message me via Zoom. You can Slack me. You can send me a LinkedIn message, um, you know, carrier pigeon, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, we're always looking for speakers um, on, you know, pretty much any topic having relating to Marketo, marketing automation, um, marketing technology. So, uh, you know, please get in touch. Um, always looking for programming for the rest of the year. Um, so we're going to continue to use Slido for the rest of the presentation. So I think it was really great for the poll and in the past couple of mugs, we've used it as well for Q and A. So anytime you have some questions um, for our presenters during today's presentation, you can just go to that same link slido.com and put in this event code and put a question in there. Feel free to put your name down. If you wanna put your name to the question, if you're not comfortable, you can leave it anonymous. You can also go there to upvote questions if there's something you think is cool that you wanna to rise to the top. Um, please also feel free to use the chat. I think we've got some really cool um, you know, chats that we've had during our previous conversations, but if you have a specific question for um, our speaker, just put it in Slido, otherwise it gets like lost in the chat and it's you know hard to keep track of. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to let Josh share so he can drive his own slides so I don't have to keep um, presenting for him. Am All I... right, let me just take over this. Cool. 
Is that working? Because my Zoom just froze on me. All right. Can everyone see my slides? Yes. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone, for having me today. And uh, thank you, Amy, for, um, for letting me speak at this month's mug. I wanted to talk to you guys really about automating your marketing automation today. And I think as marketing automation practitioners, we all know that marketing automation is really meant to save us time, right? But there's still a lot of manual and repetitive work that needs to be done. So I began looking into our processes and developing a use case specifically around executing our campaign executions. And hopefully um, by demonstrating this to you guys and as well as the requirements, it might give you guys some idea around what you can do for your own company. Because I know this use case is very unique to us, to peer storage, but I think you could take little bits of it and apply it to, to your own company. But before we do so, I uh, just wanna do a quick introduction about myself. So once again, my name is Joshua Chen. Um, I'm the Global Campaign Operations Manager at Pure Storage. Been with them for the last four years, and I am a two times Marketo certified expert with over 8,000 hours in Marketo. Probably rookie numbers compared to some here, but uh, hopefully I can share my expertise with, the, with all of you. Um, outside of work, I am a traveling enthusiast, so I usually elect for a professional photo, but I think we can all use a getaway. Um, in the near future. So this is me in Hawaii before quarantine hit at a luau. Um, another fun fact about myself, I am a diehard Laker fan. So I was born in Southern California before moving up to the Bay. So huge Kobe fan, uh, rest in peace. And I now do enjoy watching some uh, Steph Curry myself. So gonna also give you guys a bit of a background about peer storage and our campaign operations team. So I joined Peer in 2017, and at first I joined as a marketing operations specialist, pretty much responsible for executing on campaigns and, and tickets um, for America's demand operation. And at the time we had about 1,200 tickets per year. We only had 1,000 employees who we call ourselves Puritans, um, 40 requesters and two agents, which is myself and my manager. And what we had actually just done was we went away from a really bad model where we had a bunch of field marketing specialists that had access to Marketo and all of our systems supporting field marketing managers around campaign execution and various Marketo work, but they were just essentially going rogue in our system and not setting things up correctly. And they weren't extremely skilled in Marketo. So we essentially removed that access and said, all right, we're consolidating it back to marketing ops creating a ticketing system around it and defining the process so that you know everyone can get the campaigns executed correctly and efficiently. So fast forward four years, I now manage global demand operations. So I recently brought in our other theaters with uh, APJ and EMEA, Latin America, and they were essentially going rogue with their agencies. So everything is now tied to one global demand operations team and we get 8,000 tickets per year. We've quadrupled in employees and we have over a hundred requesters. And this is fully supported by 10 agents across three agencies that I manage. So, you know, as you can see, we've really grown um, in terms of the team and just overall requests, but, but this ultimately results in a growth in costs. And this is something that I would always have to manage on a quarterly basis and we wouldn't really have additional budget, even though all these new requests are coming in. And we also had to reject some requests from new teams and say, hey, look, if you want help from us, you might need to open up your own PO with our agency so we can support. So I thought about like, I thought about what we were essentially executing on. And I, I said, look, out of these 8,000 tickets, like what is super repetitive? What can be automated? And I identified roughly 4,000 tickets spanning across different campaign creation executions that we can either fully automate or automate for the most part, right? And that's when I started looking at workflow automation tools such as Workado and Trade.io and eventually landed on Workado to start really building out and mapping out this recipe of automation. So before I do get to our use case, I just wanna talk about some of the requirements of um, what we had to do to, to, to set up our systems in preparation for it. But of course, the first one is just choosing the, the, the right workflow automation tool for you. 
Um, as I mentioned, we did end up going with Ricardo because for me personally, I felt that their tool was, it was the most intuitive and it didn't require any coding. And ultimately it really reminded me of Marketo in itself with their you know recipe builder where I'm essentially building out like from a flow step within a smart campaign. Um, not to mention they already had all the applications that we needed connected in their ecosystem, but also, you know, David and their support team has been amazing. Like anytime I needed help, I would just reach out. They also have like a, a chat online that you can almost reach at any time. And that there's always a specialist that, that can help you help you out. So ultimately Workado was the tool for us. And that's when I started building out and mapping out the recipe as you kind of see right here. So of the requirements piece before I get into the actual recipe. So this is something that, you know, I think everyone knows, but we really found that this was key before really set out for our automation journey. But this is really establishing your folder structure, right? Um, for ours, for our marketing activities folder, we, we keep it fairly straightforward. We have a marketing programs where we house all of our campaigns our op operational programs where we house, you know, the lead scoring or enrichment or various operational programs that run our system in the back end, And then we have our global templates folder. Now, when you hop into marketing programs, I know this is gonna be different for everyone, but for us, we found it best to essentially have one folder per tactic that we run. So not only is it easy for us to save, it's easy to look for things and there's less confusion for our agencies when they're executing this for us. So if I were to just use content syndication as an example, we also break these folders down into different levels. Um, for instance, in this case, we go by year, tactic, and then we bring in theater, and then we bring in quarter. Other tactics might go into deeper levels like region or subdivision, such as like regional events and virtual events, because we have marketers executing that across the board. But if you have this name, this folder structure and naming convention down, you can now essentially create that automation and rules for where to save everything when the campaign is created. The next part is program naming convention. This is something that we always had in place. Um, but as an example, those are like two of our, our main um, program naming conventions. And I think this is very key, not just like as a best practice, but like the naming convention itself will tell you everything about a campaign, right? And it's going to flow into all your other systems, starting for, with Salesforce and perhaps into your data visualization tool like us with Tableau. And this is where all the marketers report on their campaigns. And this is where lead reports on the campaigns. So having a, a very defined naming convention allows you to figure out exactly what this campaign is just by looking at its name. And by defining that rule, you can also then set up your rules for how you can essentially set up these campaigns with Workato um, and, and automate all of it, which I'll touch upon a little later. So next up is program templates and tokenization. So for us, we, we essentially have our folder of global templates and we like to have essentially one templates per tactic. And within that template, we like to keep all the template, we, we like to essentially house all the assets you would possibly need in that template so that if we clone it, we can do anything that we want. Um, for, some some, for some tactics where we might have assets that need to be translated, we do leverage multiple versions of it. For example, like our regional event templates, we do have 20 different versions of it because it's, it's fully tokenized with different languages that ultimately populate the emails, but they are all cloned from the exact same template itself. And then when we get to the tokenization piece, which kind of relates to the other, uh, the other portion is ins ensuring that you are leveraging these program tokenizations, right? Because you technically can have all your assets built out and you will never need to touch them because by tokenizing everything and leveraging your program tokens, you can fully populate all your emails across the board, even some smart campaigns, your landing pages, and much of this data is really going into different places. So you're saving yourself a lot of time by just updating one token and updating everything within the program. Okay, this is gonna be the final and I think the most important piece. And um, this has probably been the one giving me the most struggle <laughs> over the last year. And it's having an integrated um, ticketing and intake system that you control. So for some background, we I, I started this automation journey about a year ago. 
And we were just moving off of our old ticketing system. It was very basic one called Happy Fox. And I was evaluating different vendors that would allow us to essentially connect with Workato and ultimately be the initial you know, data intake ticketing system. And I was actually very, very close to closing uh, with um, Zendesk, but I was kind of pulled at the last minute by our IT team and said, they were like, hey, uh, the entire company uses ServiceNow. So why don't you use ServiceNow as well? And ultimately there's some politics and then we ended up using ServiceNow, which is a great and very great and robust tool that integrates with Workato. But because we did not own the system and the entire setup of our entire catalog had to be owned by IT and any changes needed to be made by IT, this whole process has been a major headache, right? So if I can give you any advice throughout this process is, own the ticketing system that you're trying to run the automation with because you're essentially building out this catalog and form to have the exact pieces of data that you need, that you need to test. So just ownership of this is very key, but here's a preview of what our catalog looks like within marketing operations. So let's uh, go ahead and get the let the automation begin now that I've kind of gone through some of the requirements that I felt were important. Um, I'm going to talk about a use case today that I think is the more complex version. And this is essentially a campaign by a landing page creation. So this is a marketer comes in and says, hey, I need a campaign to be executed. I want um, a Marketo program, a Salesforce campaign, and I want um, invite emails. I want a registration tracking on a landing page. I want confirmations, reminders, follow-ups, and all that jazz. So I'm using that as an example, but just think of there's all these different campaigns that can be automated, but this one does have like the most different assets and steps. So just to start off the journey, we start in ServiceNow where a ticket submitted for the campaign invite and landing page creation request. And all these fields that are submitted will be referenced right in later step and plug into the different systems. So the first step is Workato takes in the different pieces of data and generates a campaign name based on the campaign naming convention that we define. And before we used to have a Google sheet generator that our agencies need to go in and then type in all these little things to generate a campaign name before going into Salesforce and Marketo to, to update those. And it's just repetitive work. And that took like five, 10 minutes. And sometimes they weren't even following it correctly. So Workato became our campaign name generator. And once that is done, Workato then goes into Salesforce, creates a new campaign with that campaign name and fills out all the, the required fields within the campaign object with the details from the ticket. And then we move over to Marketo. So based on, again, the various fields on the ticket, such as the tactic, the start date, the theater, the region, these are all fields in the Salesforce campaign object too. Workato then locates a folder based on that naming convention because we already defined the rules within the, the folder structure. And if it doesn't find this folder, then it creates the folder within Marketo. And this is really beneficial for us too, because like we don't have a 2022 content syndication folder right now. And our agencies sometimes don't really do these rules themselves and they save things all over the place and it just makes a messy instance. So that will make sure that, you know, your instance in itself will always be scaled out as, you know, time passes and you run more campaigns. And then um, once we are, once that campaign folder has, or once that folder has been located or created, um, Workato then clones the correct Marketo program template based on the tactic and the language on the ticket. And we'll then save that, that program into the folder itself. Next step is the tokenization piece. Um, using once again, the fields on the ticket, we're then mapping and updating all the tokens within the program, the program that just got created. And this in turn will populate everything, right? The invites, which we have multiple, multiple versions of it. So that if the field marketer wants to send an email blast, they can choose the versions. And then we have the confirmations, the reminders, and the follow-ups all updated and pretty much ready to use. Um, and the other thing that we also do is we have, we leverage like a, a banner overlay on all of our emails. So within the ticket itself, the marketer has the ability to choose what like banner theme that they want, which will be the same theme will be used on all the emails, the landing pages, and they can even preview it on like ServiceNow saying like, oh, this is what it looks like. This is great. There's like a 
the let's say there's a happy hour event that we have like banners with like some some beer mugs and, and whatnot so they can always customize their events to exactly what they need and it the design will apply everywhere so once all that is ready um we have some bonus automations, right? So we don't use both of these right now. We do use Ad Event, which is a really cheap um, calendar customization tool that allows you to create an event or a calendar event with an Ad Event. And it generates different links that you can bring back into Marketo and folks can you know, add events to their calendar, to the calendar of their choice, whether it's uh, Google, Outlook, Microsoft, um, Apple and whatnot. So we use Workato to build, we connected Workato with AdEvent as well and built out this event and then bring, and then add, we added it to tokens within Marketo so it populates on emails as well. Now the Zoom portion, this is something I've, I'm considering, but just due to bandwidth, I haven't been able to look into more, but you know, Workato does have good integrations with Zoom. So you can also create a meeting or a webinar using those same fields from the tickets and then bring this back into Marketo as well throughout any emails and, and so forth. So back to tomorrow. Um, you can also use Workato to activate any trigger smart campaigns, which would be the next step. So we would essentially activate like a fills out form smart campaign to capture the lead, to send the confirmation and anything else that you would typically do there. But we also use a step to trigger our sync to Salesforce smart campaigns. And something that I did discover during this process with David is there's actually no API within Marketo to bi-directionally sync to your Salesforce campaign. It just doesn't exist. And I've requested Marketo for it, but we realized, you know what, we don't need it because we can leverage the Salesforce campaign token, which once we finish creating the Salesforce campaign, we actually link that to the token as well. And then we leverage these smart campaigns saying, if the person in this, if this member of program changes statuses to this, change that status in Salesforce. And we actually found that this is better than the bi-directional sync. Cause as you all know, the bi-directional sync takes 30 minutes or an hour sometimes, or maybe even longer. But, and this is essentially instant. So you can ensure that your leads are always showing up in Salesforce or, or Tableau immediately. Next, we then schedule all the batch smart campaigns. So first thing we do is we'll, we'll send test emails to um, that, that were created to the requester. And then we will then schedule the reminder emails and, and post event emails at a specific time based on the, the date um, and, and time of the event, right? So all this can, can be automated. And then we're gonna close this out. Um, for the most part, everything's done. And you essentially just need to let the requester know that. So we go back into service now, Mercado grabs all the campaign name, the Marketo program link, Salesforce campaign link, landing page URL, and then updates it in the ticket. You can type out your own like preset message, make it seem like it's coming from a human, but give everything that they need to them and update the status to you know under review or closed, right? So that is kind of the full recipe um, as of right now. And this takes us roughly, 60 to 90 minutes by our AG, right? Depending on the person. Um, and we get like a thousand of these at least per year. So hopefully by kind of showing you this, I, I wanna give you guys some other ideas in terms of what else you can automate um, because I know this is very unique to peer, um, but I think it could have great benefits, which I'll, I'll talk upon here. So cost savings, obviously, if if you're automating you know, half of your tickets, you can really save a ton of money. And for us, that's in the, the hundreds of thousands of agency costs. This is very key. Increase in speed. So we have a three business day SLA for all of our tickets. And even though let's say a basic campaign creation request for a Marketo program, Salesforce campaign, and a quick um, activation of a smart campaign, that might take 15 or 20 minutes by a person, right? But we have this whole queue of tickets that the person needs to work on first. There's a difference in time zone. And ultimately that might end up taking two business days or even three. But if you have the automation ready, like for, for that specific use case, you can trigger it immediately. And that happens in seconds. Um, and you're not limited to the, the, the slow speed of Marketo when you're doing things manually. For example, if you were to try to clone one of our regional mm -hmm. event templates, you might be sitting there waiting for like 30 minutes, 30 seconds to a minute and a half just for, just for that program to finish cloning because there's so many assets. But with Marketo, with Workato, it's pretty much instant. 
right, using the API. So with the use case I just discussed, like if you're not doing any approvals, this one will take a, a few minutes, but ultimately it just saves so much time there. Now, ability to scale. So um, like, like I mentioned, we had to essentially reject some requests from time to time or have folks open up a new PO, but if we can automate all that, that's really not an issue for us anymore. And for me, I'm just trying to save myself some time by not having to worry about anything that the agency does or doesn't do, because at the end of the day, I'm here to fix their mistakes or to address their mistakes. And that's the last thing I want to do. So hopefully this is going to save me more time so that I can start focusing on new projects and automating other areas, right? Because I think we're just really touching the surface here. Data accuracy and global consistency kind of go hand in hand, but like I mentioned, I, as a human, there's just mistakes that are made. Like I was, I was doing this job for a year and I would make these very minor mistakes that, you know, marketers come later on, like, Hey, why is this, why is this, this, and why is that, that? And ultimately I'm just like, Oh, sorry. Like I, I just messed up with one little piece of data, but by, by mapping everything out and using the exact data that's coming from ServiceNow, then you can remove all the inaccuracies there and save yourself time later on from fixing it. And the global consistency is really key, especially for us, like our agencies, while we have everything documented for them, there's still a ton of processes that they need to follow. And sometimes they just miss certain things. So um, if you're able to map everything out, you're ensuring global consistency across the board. So that is pretty much it on my end. Um, once again, I, I know this is a very particular use case, but I'm hoping it could spark some mm -hmm. other ideas on your end. And you know, if we have time during Q&A, I can share some other little things here and there that we've been doing with Workato and Marketo. So Amy, back to you. Cool, thank you so much, Josh. That was really interesting. I feel like my mind is kind of blown, especially like when it generates the ad event link and then it adds that in. That's very cool. I was literally just talking to my um, like email marketing manager about ad event today. I'm like, oh, if we could automate that, that would be a very cool additional step. Um, mm -hmm. So we have some really cool questions coming in. Um, those of you who submitted questions into the Zoom chat, I have moved them over to Slido, but for the rest of you who have questions, um, please pop them into Slido. As soon as I share my screen again, you'll see the Slido link. Um, it's just easier to have them all in one place. Um, so we can just see them um, and feel free if you want to go into Slido and you see a cool question upvoted, then it'll like surface up a little higher. I think we have plenty of time to go through all of them. Not really worried about that, but um, that should be fine. Okay. Can Amy properly share her screen? Okay. Can y'all see Slido? Yes. Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, we're just gonna start from the beginning, start at the top. Oh wait, I need to do this in two different screens, I think. Maybe I can do it from here. Real talk guys, I never remember how to do Slido properly, but we're all friends here, right? Um, Lauren had a great question. Is Workato able to define the Salesforce campaign member statuses based on the campaign type it is creating? Yeah, so this part, we actually had to do a slight workaround. Um, this, we, we did encounter this issue. So David recommended this really, really cheap um, Salesforce app connector. Um, and it, it's, it's on their app exchange. I think it was like, oh, I wanna say a hundred dollars a year, but you're, it's essentially a tool that lets you define all the member statuses. Yeah. Um, across all the Salesforce campaign types or based on tactic. So that's what I did beforehand. I just aligned all the different statuses and anytime um, within Marketo, we define that status, we would update accordingly. Yeah. So- that, yeah. Sorry, go mm -hmm. ahead. Oh no, that's, uh, that, that was pretty much is it. it is that the one it's got a funny name, like AAA it, Consult? AAA like Consult, that? yeah, yeah. AAA con um, Consult. Yeah, do you guys wanna, um, or maybe David, can you put, pop a link to that in the chat? For people i think that's like a pretty common use case for people um just even outside of this if you want to define campaign member statuses for a campaign type because you cannot do that um automatically in salesforce um that might be a really good resource for everybody so um mm -hmm. thank you for that question lauren okay warren says does your model take into account or a co or a content a, a content calendar of communications limits if not mm -hmm. how do you manage that 
great question. Calm yeah. limits and calendars, my favorite topic. Yeah, so for us, um, any emails that we're sending within the Marketo program are operational emails, such as you know the confirmation email or reminder or um, a follow-up. And this is for people that did register, right? Or okay. fill out a form for the event. Any email blasts, like actual invitations and they be, need to be sent out are through a different request. And we do follow our email marketing calendar that way. So that portion is not automated today, right? But if they were trying to submit an email blast, we can essentially just leverage whichever email is created and then follow our, our current comms limits and uh, content calendar. Are you planning on using Workato to automate any of the email creation for that? Or is that still going to be a pretty like regular email process? Well, um, we've, we're not really using Workato to automate the email creation because we've already defined what all the emails would look like within sure. the template. Um, and we have different versions for them and they're all tokenized. So you can choose which one you need. Okay. Um, but we do leverage NAC um, to build out all of our email templates. Um, and it has a really great integration with Marketo. No yeah. coding required, no HTML knowledge required. You just, it's like a WYSIWYG that you just develop within NAC. And then we tokenize everything there and then sync it over to our Marketo program templates. And, and if you, for some, uh, I, was, I was gonna say for some reason, like our current email templates don't match what the event really want, what, what the marketer wants to do, then of course we can build a custom email from scratch, which isn't too big of an effort. But we do try to, based on the tactic, um, push marketers to leverage the existing template. Um, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's aligned with branding and just our overall processes. Okay. And anytime we do need to update that, we just update it on the template level. So we just did a recent brand refresh. So we had to update all of our emails. Mm, yeah, that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay. Um, thank you, Warren, for that question. I'm sure, Warren, you're also happy to hear about NAC. I know that is one of your favorite tools as well. Okay. Any concerns with API limits or backlog? Um, so not with any other tools, um, but I did encounter a small issue with Marketo at first when we were trying to, um, another recipe that, that were, was updating tokens too quickly. Mm. So we were able to address this like within the Workato recipe, right? Like you have different wait steps that you okay. can add to address any like more limits within like a small time frame. But okay. other than that, everything's gone smoothly. Okay, cool. So look, my question, um, I just like to know, you know, I think marketing ops is like people process and technology. Can you talk about the people part of it? Like, how do you get marketers on board? It sounds like you have to make the ticketing system really fleshed out because every mm -hmm. detail needs to be in the ticket. How do you mm -hmm. get them on board so you don't have uh, garbage in, garbage out? Yeah. Well, well, once again, I think this is really structuring your ticketing system and forms in a very clean and efficient manner. Like you don't want to ask for anything that you don't need and everything you do need, you want to make sure you ask it in a, a format where they can't get it wrong, right? Whether it's drop down selections or just very sp specifying every element of it. And with ServiceNow, like every field that we have, you can have a description under the field, you can link it. So there's documentation for additional um, uh, questions about what that field means. So if you're going down our form, like it's you should have everything that you need based on the description or the documentation tied to it. Um, but onboarding, I would say onboarding to ServiceNow was pretty quick, right? Because our forms were set up the same way as we had in Happy Fox, but it was just more robust in, in this okay. setting. Um, and there's a ton of workflow, right? If you choose this tactic, you're going to have to ask all these different set of questions. If you choose this tactic and same thing. So it's really customizing your form to, to work for the marketer and what data points you need. Um, there's a question that Yen asked that I'm going to tag onto this about their request process about how do you validate that the requesters put the right information in? Like, is there, mm -hmm. does the requester have to QA the final thing to make mm -hmm. sure that like the webinar is actually scheduled for the right date, for example? Yeah. So at this time, it's really on the requester, right? To make sure that they're submitting things correctly. And Oopsies. we do find that, um, and, and we do find that after, you know, a request is submitted and we build everything out, there's always changes that need to happen. It's obviously the, the, probably the more time consuming portion of the request, but if we are able to automate it ex based on the data that they're providing, 
then every it's really on them fully on them now because in the past it would be a bit mix of both right um they would they would add or submit a request and perhaps our agent didn't do things correctly and there's just a lot of back and forth but now if they know that everything that they're entering is going to be automated into the other systems they're also going to be more careful about what they enter is there a way for them once it goes live or once it's like mm-hmm in QA, is there a way for them to review it in Marketo mm-hmm. or somewhere to make sure that it's what they expected? Yeah, so um, that one flow step that I mentioned with sending the emails okay. to uh, a requester, that's the main thing that you're really reviewing, the, the okay. emails um, and the landing page. And they pretty much have the same content on both. Okay. What about like this reminder emails that are scheduled? Yeah, so the reminder emails, we essentially have like a very default text that we find across the board that's translated everywhere. And there's little elements that you can customize after those initial texts that the marketer can add. Yeah, I was actually just curious about the timing. How does the marketer know that the reminder email is scheduled for the right time? I mean, that's always an issue that, that we have, like kind of need to trust us on that. And there have been instances where they are not scheduled at the right time. And it's even more difficult for our um, international agencies because the, just figuring out the time zones is always difficult. So if we're able to map using Workado, it's gonna yeah. be much more accurate, yeah. That's great, that is great. Um, question is, apologies if you already mentioned this, but curious if this is your only use case for automation or were you just explaining this one use case? So it's, it's not the only use case for automation. It's just one of the bigger ones. Um, so I can talk a little bit about this if, if, if we have a little time. Sure. Um, so as this is the, the first thing that I jumped right in, right? When I, I said, all right, we need to start automating this. What do we do? Um, but as we went through the journey, I actually started using Workado for other areas. Um, so for example, I mentioned that for regional events, like virtual events, webinars, these are events with assets that need to be translated across the board. But we are, and we have about 20 different versions of it for different languages and different regions because they all have different footers and obviously languages. Um, And the way that I was able to create these on scale on a repeatable um, level was I essentially mapped everything, all the tokens out um, in a Google sheet. And I would then leverage Mercado to clone these programs and then clone these, clone these main program templates, update all the tokens for all 20 languages for that template, and then create and then save them in our, our folders, right? So that piece of creating 60 templates, I could just copy and paste something on a sheet and it happens within. That's cool. This one takes a little longer because I did find that API time um, error. So I essentially spaced it out. So if I ever need to do this, I would just copy and paste all the tokens and then uh, let it run for about an hour because there, there's like sure. a few minutes apart for, for each template, but I'm not doing any of that, right? Like I can't even imagine trying to do that manually. Totally. Um, I mean, another one that I've been doing from time to time is just the deletion of Marketo campaigns or the deletion of Salesforce campaigns on scale. Um, and you can also, the, the recipe that I just talked about, you could accomplish it through Google Forms and Google Sheets, right? If you're able to map everything correctly. So there have been instances where marketers come to me and say, hey, we're, we want to start planning for the whole fiscal year and we need to create these 50 campaigns or 100 campaigns. So on a Google Sheet, we have all the fields mapped out and we're just kind of typing it. Yeah, we just fill out all the rows and columns and then I just paste it into another Google Sheets which Workato is listening to, and it creates, it does whatever we just, the use case I just described, but on scale at once, right? Without a ticketing system. Um, Yeah, so I think those are just a few Marketo examples that I've been using, but David would know much more, right? Like (laughs) uh, of what Workato can do. Um, And right now I'm also using Workato to to build an integration between NewsCred and Binder for our brand team. And that's something that I don't think anyone's done before with Workato. So just another Workato related project. That is awesome. Thank you. I think that gives us all some, I love the idea of starting with a Google sheet, especially like if you can't get a whole ticketing system set up, like, yeah. you know, can, can you even start with like, you know, just, yeah, starting with a Google sheet would be like very attainable for people. Yeah, I would, no, that would actually be um, 
my, my high recommendation because that's what we did. Um, when we were going through the transition from Happy Fox to ServiceNow, it took yeah. forever for ServiceNow to even get set up. So prior to that, everything I was doing was in Google Sheets, making yeah. it my ticketing system. Yeah. David, would you say that's common for people to like start with a Google Sheet just to get like a, you know, V1? Yeah, totally. It's, uh, I mean, it's just very accessible, right? Uh, like if you, if, if I, Josh was not the admin or didn't have like a quick, easy access to service now, like he, you, you can kind of use Google Sheets to design a mock-up of like, this is the data we're going to pull in on the yeah. trigger of the recipe. And then, um, you know, once you kind of have the proof of concept working, then you go to your ServiceNow admin or your whatever admin and say, hey, look at this automation I've set up. All we need to do now is plug it into your system. Uh, yeah. So. Cool. Makes sense. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to move on because um, we've got some really good questions. Warren wants to know, with a process that's fairly fixed, does it limit the creativity of your campaigns in your opinion? I mean, I think it will to some extent, but that's kind of the trade-off of establishing a global process. Um, but we do try, I, th I think once this whole thing saves us a lot more time, we're gonna start building different, um, more, more assets into our templates itself, right? So you can leverage different things. Um, mm -hmm. And since we are using the same set of templates, like if you need to do a refresh, like you could just do it at the template level. Um, and, and ensure that this is happening everywhere. But I, I do agree that you, know, you are kind of like setting yourself with these specified processes and templates, which can limit the creativity. Um, but if you ever need anything beyond that, like we still have agents that are trained in building out um, emails with a knack and we can add any smart campaigns as needed to, to do th things a little differently. Totally. Um, this next question, I believe, came in when you're talking about ServiceNow, about mm -hmm. why you built it in ServiceNow without, rather than just building your own um, ticketing system. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have any coding knowledge, so I, I wouldn't know how to build my own ticketing yeah. system. But primarily, it was, once again, the, the consolidation of ticketing systems and having a centralized place for our employees to submit tickets. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was service now. Like that's where we submit like all IT, HR, finance, legal requests. Um, so at the time I, I, I reluctantly agreed that, all right, it makes sense to consolidate. I mean, I think that's fair. We, we have that, we, um, you know, use Jira at Iterable. So mm -hmm. we moved our rev ops to getting to Jira. I happen to like Jira. I think it was the right solution for us, but mm -hmm. having that like, you know, consolidation of, of tools, I think there's a huge advantage to that. So you know, mm -hmm. there's, but you know, then you're constrained to that system for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, before automation, were you having issues with just throughput or also quality of campaigns? Was there a lot of back and forth between the requesters and the execution team? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something that's hard to avoid. And it's always at the end of the day, it's really on the requester for trying to QA their campaigns before submission. And even though we always repeat it over and over, like, hey, make sure you're you're checking your tickets before submitting. Like, pe people are always in a rush and they're just trying to get campaigns out the door. And this is always gonna be the piece that we, we can't really automate, right? Like uh, making updates to campaigns because something has changed. But you know, down the line, I would love to look into it where, hey, what if, um, like, what if there was a date change? Like what, can I build a separate recipe so that they can just type in the date and it changes everywhere? So that, I don't know, like that's, that's something I haven't looked into yet, but I will certainly. Yeah, I think um, we all can relate to that where you're like, okay, final, 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 final. And then somebody mm -hmm. wants to change something and you're like, cool. yeah. Okay, um, good question. Um, who was involved in making the decision to automate and how did you get buy-in across the org? Cause it sounds like obviously mm -hmm. you were paying agencies to do this. So it sounds like cost savings were like a, maybe a no brainer, but still mm -hmm. this is a huge undertaking. So yeah. you know, how was that? How'd you navigate the like buy-in and road mapping and politics? Um, so I, I kind of understood the process very well because I, I did establish it and uh, the, the costs were an obvious growing factor. And I, when I first looked into work auto, David, I want to say you guys gave me a free trial run, right? And I was able to play around to see what was actually possible. 
And once I was able to establish that, I think we did get buy-in um, from the marketing ops leaders to, hey, let's let's purchase this and let's start building it out. Um, but you know, just based on those those key um, benefits that I mentioned, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, um, that certainly makes sense. Um, ooh, uh, good question. Um, do you have a typical Salesforce connection or do you use Workado? So traditionally we have a Salesforce connection, but anything, and I think we probably will leverage that, right? But if anything is created through Workado, it's gonna be using the smart campaigns that I mentioned um, because during the creation process, everything will be connected through the tokens mm -hmm. and um, statuses will change based on the triggers. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and the other thing to note here is that um, you are kind of losing out on the bi-directional sync, but we never change member statuses or delete members from the Salesforce side in our campaigns. So that's not really relevant. Um, and we still have the overall sync between uh, Marketo and Salesforce for just leads and, and contacts in general. So on the campaign level, not having the bi-directional um, has very little impact on us. Makes sense. Okay. Um, looks like, looks like actually we had two questions about ad events. So I'm going to group them together. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the benefit of using ad event instead of the Marketo mm -hmm. token and how do you get the webinar unique link for ad event? Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Yeah. So, I mean, the benefit of ad event is we, we just give more options to users because with, with Marketo, I think traditionally you can only save using their, um, uh, add to calendar token. It, it only allows you to save to ICS. And I never save those because I use Gmail or Google Calendar. Um, so I heard there's a lot of feedback around that. I was like, all right, add events. You can, it's very easy to create an event in there. And you're essentially just copying like a URL and putting it into like one token within our Marketo um, program. And it updates everywhere. And how it populates on our emails is like you click um, add to calendar and it's just, like different options of where you want to save it to. So that one, it's, it's very cheap. And it was kind of a no brainer for us as well. In terms of the uh, webinar token, so this is the one portion that we haven't been able to automate yet, but we are able to use using a Google sheet and just kind of like a, a format of the text, we were able to, to get the unique link into ad event and make sure that it populates across uh, the emails. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna check that off. Wait, where did I, I'm gonna clear that one. Okay, I'm gonna have time for one or two more. Oh, David has a question. <laughs> Knowing what you know now, if you could design your Marketo folder structure and program naming conventions from the ground up anyway to streamline. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to clear that out. Um, oh, can we get it back or um, kind of- Yeah, hang on. Let me see if I can. Um, the question was about um, pro like if you could go back in time, would you like streamline and, or clean up your program folder and naming convention and make it make that more streamlined. Sorry, I didn't mean to clear yeah. it instead of. Um, mm -hmm. Josh, yeah. we, you know, there, there are some trickiness around like different theaters had different naming conventions or different mm -hmm. types of programs at different, right? So like, yeah. do you have thoughts on if you were to design your folder structure and naming convention from the mm -hmm. ground up, like any thoughts on how to streamline that? Um, yeah, I think this is going to be very different for every company. Um, for us, when we, before we had this global demand operations team, or EMEA folks and, and uh, our other theaters had their own folders and, their, and it was a mess. So um, if we can go back, we would have consolidated it earlier. I know if you do scale out, maybe it doesn't make sense for you as a company to have, you know, all your different theaters campaigns within one folder. Um, but for us, it, it does, right? So it's just really doing consolidating beforehand and being able to define those folder structures. And then, yeah, I think it's establishing that global campaign naming convention a little earlier, because for us, um, I know America's folded very closely, but the other theaters, it was, it was just a mess. So um, just get a head start in establishing a global process, not just um, for your, your theater or region. Yeah, that, uh... <laughs> Always good to think ahead before you get too big to get your hand, get your hands around it for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Well, um, we've got about five minutes left. So I want to take a little time to wrap up. 
Um, this was really great, Josh. Thank you so much. And thank you, David, for bringing Josh to us um, and for you know, helping him bring together this really cool system. Um, I think you know, many of us are at smaller companies, but are, you know, we need to be thinking about how are our scaling operations are gonna scale. Um, and I think we can all start thinking about like, how can we bring this mindset and how can we start automating a little bit? And how can we like, you know, pull in pieces of this, um, you know, and maybe we start to think about some new tools and some, you know, new processes. 